Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Sam Wong's channel. Today, we are going to be reviewing the RE100 Saka 2 F set. For this Scampla right here, I have a special story that I want to share with you guys. When we were little kids, when we taking a look at the Gundam series, we often only focus about how cool the MS design is, and then we thought that war is cool. War in the pocket is a different story because Saka 2 F set came from the war in the pocket. War in the pocket is a story about a little kid. Uh, who used to thought that Xeon and the MS is really cool, War is such a cool thing, until he met the pilot of the Saka 2 f which is uh, Banada Wiseman, and then he watched the pilot died while fighting the NT-1. War in the Pocket is a really special Gundam series because it's not only spreading the message about stopping the war, it's actually teaching you that War is very cruel, there's no names, you die, it might be the one that you are close with, so cherish the people that you love. This is the charm of Universal Sentry. It may got the lame story, it may got the boring scenes, it may got like the most standard MS design, but the story behind the series is actually really deep and it's very good for us to reflect about that message. Now, let me say it like this, War in the Pocket, I really recommend whoever never watched it, go watch the War in the Pocket because this one right here is just not a simple Gundam series who taught you that oh, we should stop fighting, make peace, oh, you're right, you're wrong. It's actually standing from the point of view as an audience because, you know, that little kid is the audience. So let me sum up the War in the Pocket in a quick summary right here. War in the Pocket is still a Gundam series. It may be very lame and boring in terms of the flow, but the story behind it, I really want you guys to actually feel the story and feel the sadness inside of it. It doesn't have the highest resolution. It doesn't have a very beautiful mechanic design. It doesn't really have like a very good character design, but the message behind the story is just too deep. Sometimes when I rewatch the series, I will still cry. Okay, I went a little bit too far, but how about we go back to the topic of today's video. So, RE100 Saka 2 F set. Finally, 1 to 100 scale, we got a Saka 2 F set. The XGUC one, I doubt for like around future 20 years, I won't see a revived version because I don't see Bandai why they need to rework that unit because it doesn't make money. So, XGUZ Saka 2 F set, it may never got a revive version. I'm just saying it. It's around like 20 years later, maybe there's one, but who knows. Today, finally, we got it. And this box art, directly drawn from the last battle between the Saka 2 F set and the NT1, and for the Master Grade NT1 2.0 is um, the NT1 fighting the Saka 2 F set. So it's really iconic. All right, let's take a look at the box first. So at the side right here, we got the, oh, we got head option right here. We got the commander, we got the normal soldier, and oh, wow, well, it called, what was it called? Fritz, Fritz Helm, is that what you call Fritz Helm? And then we also got the description of the overall Saka 2 F set, weapon and the thrusters, and also the joint as well. And then for the other side, Right here, we got the information about the Saka 2 F set. And then we got the gimmicks introduction, front and rear view. Hmm, okay. So let's just open the box first. I know that I said this a lot, but the RE100 instruction manual design is actually really nice. I like it. And first, for the instruction menu, you can see the information down here. You want to read it, you can just pause it here. And then let's start flipping. Okay, so let's take a look. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a step one, step two, step three guide. Okay, keep flipping. Head unit. So head unit this time, we got three of them. I assume you can switch between them. Yep, you can switch between them. And then, moving on. Okay, so for the mono eye, you have to take out the head and then adjust it. Mm, okay. And then for the decals, seems like there's a lot. That's pretty cool. At the back right here, we got the description of the weapons, mechanics, and also we have the color guide down here. 
I gotta say that for some reason I really like the RE100 weapons and mechanism description. I really like it for the RE100 version. Let's start with the A runner. So A runner right here, mainly the shoulders and then we got some head part right here. We also got some legs part down here and then the heat hawk parts down here. So for the G runner right here is the power pipes of the Zanka 2 F set. It's very soft so it shouldn't be limiting the articulation I assume on the legs. F1 and F2 runner, so mainly is for the red thruster all over the body and some of them will be the waist part and the torso as well and then the hand grenades. C1 runner, body parts again, we can see some shoulders part, we can see some torso part, shield, waist part as well and that will be it. The C2 runner contains two clear piece for the head and also the mono eye specifically. We have two B runners and then um, is for the legs part, we got some joint part of the, well, is this the legs though? And then we got some part for the shoulders. And the rest of the part though, these will be the forearm parts. And this one right here, I assume is going to be the feet. We got a E1 and E2 runner. So for the E1 runner right here, we can see the Saku machine gun. We can see the heat hawk. We can see the backpack. And then we can also see the feet part here. For the D runner though, we got three of them. So D2 and then two D1. So I will just take like one of them just for the description right here. So for the D1 runner right here, you can see that it's mostly the inner frame of the Saka 2 F set. So I'm not even bothered to take guesses. Now, lastly, decals. Well, of course it's stickers. So anyway, we went through every single thing. Let's jump to the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Saka 2 F set right here. So this is the finishing of it. I really want to commend Bandai about this RE100 right here because this RE100, it surprised me and I definitely recommend people to pick this up. For my last video about RE100 Viginagina, I mentioned that if Bandai add another red runner to achieve that perfect color separation inside the thruster, then the kit, I honestly don't have anything to pick on. This time, the Saka 2 F set, Bandai gave us the red runner to achieve that perfect color separation. Thrusters, you don't need to repaint them. And basically, this is a perfect kit for lazy people like myself. I don't have to repaint a single thing and I can still have fun with it. For the Saka 2 F set right here, it don't have the coolest appearance, gigantic weapons, or fancy backpacks but what it gives you is the solid as rock stability and also the articulation is not going to disappoint you you can pose with it very frequently and also this re100 socket right here it showed me that there's changes to the actual design. So remember, sometimes the Zaku, when you move the legs, the pipes, it's kind of like getting in the way and affecting your articulation. This time they solved the problem by using soft plastic. So the legs articulation will no longer be affected. I really like the change. So anyway, let's start checking out the articulation first. As usual, we'll always start from the head. This head right here, I really admire that Bandai gave us the variation. So first one right here, here we got the commander head or the fits helm for you to switch all you have to do is just pull out the top of the head and then switch around but i do want to warn you that it's pretty tight so i suggest you try to minimize the time that you switch it for the articulation though first we got move up move down very nice angle moving 360 as well so the articulation on the head is pretty nice if you want to move the mono eye it's a bit annoying though you have to pull out the head and you will see a spot right here and all you need to do is just move the spot and the mono eye will move personally i really like the chest design right here the chest design is fake it's buff i absolutely love it but it's a re100 which means we cannot open the cockpit but the articulation on the chest is hmm is actually pretty nice so first moving around man you know all the sakus they don't move around anyway so side to side a little bit as well they especially gave you a joint for you to move front and back so the articulation inside the chest is pretty nice for the shoulders and arms it's just a standard saku design one side is the shield one side is the spike shoulder you can move them out and then move them back in just like this for the articulation, 360 moving, really nice. Lift up, uh, you know, over 90 degrees is actually pretty good. And then we can also move to the front, hmm, pretty nice. And then we can bend, touching the shoulders, very nice. 
we can spin the arm as well the forearm can rotate as well and for the hands option down here we have a trigger hand an open hand and please don't glue the hand armor because they have to share it let's take a look at the waist part so first the front skirt armor you can move up more than 90 degrees individual movement very nice for the side skirt you will see three hand grenades these are just for decoration if you want to use it and pose with it there's an extra one for you to do it at the left side skirt, you will see a magazine hidden inside the side skirt right here. And for the back skirt, as usual, there's no movement. This piece right here is for you to store the heat hawk later. Let's take a look at the articulation on the legs. So first, kicking to the front, 90 degrees. Kicking to the back, the back skirt is not movable, so of course there's interruption. Kicking to the side, 90 degrees. Bending though, close to a U shape, and this time, as I said, the pipe is using a soft plastic, so there's no interruption when you're moving the legs. Turn to the back, there's this small piece right here you can move as well. For the feet, move around a little bit side to side, and then at the tip of the feet, you can bend as well. For the joint inside the waist, there's a part for you to adjust the legs position to furthermore improve the articulation, kicking to the front or kicking to the back to improve it furthermore. You see, when you move the joint to the front, when you kick to the back, you can kick it furthermore, is close to 90 degrees. For the backpack part, there's nothing else for me to introduce because honestly, the thrusters on the backpack, they cannot move as well. So the only thing that I can talk about this thruster right here is that you don't have to repaint anything because they gave you the colors. All right, let's check out the accessories. So the first one that we got is the Heat Hawk right here. I repaint the blade to silver because in my memory, and my impression towards the axe is that the blade is metal, it's gonna be silver, so that's why I repaint the blade, and it looks really good. And I highly encourage people to repaint the blade to silver, and it looks really good in my opinion. Uh, right now, the axe is for you to pose with it, it's a long handle. If you want to store on the back skirt, you need to remove the handle and then put on a short handle, so you can put it onto the back skirt. The last accessories is the 90mm machine gun right here, but no articulation, no extra color, so it's not really that interesting, it's just use it as a handheld weapon. One thing though, you can pull down the magazine, and you can see the hollow parts inside the magazine. Uh, it really affects the visual experience, so I suggest you to use something to fill it up. Thank you guys for watching this video, this will be the end of it. Saka 2 FZ is one of the finest model kit, if you're a Saku fan, definitely pick this up. Great articulation. It's not really that expensive, actually, $60. And also, great color separation. Lazy people like myself, this is a perfect kit for us. If you like this video, you can always subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you can notify whenever I upload a new video. Furthermore, you can donate to me through PayPal. Link is in the description and also at the channel page. I appreciate everyone who supports me and I'll see you in the next video review. Goodbye.